Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to the Mid-Level Media channel, your hub for everything physical media and entertainment. I am Ken, here today to talk about this latest Arrow video release, Shock, a film directed by Mario Bava, his last film of this famous Italian influential filmmaker. So yeah, this is a really cool release by Arrow Video and I'm really looking forward to talking about with you guys, talking about the movie, the transfer, the special features, the packaging, I'll do a little unboxing, all that stuff. I'm also going to be talking about these other two Arrow Video releases for the month or unboxing them, I didn't watch these, uh, but we will get into an unboxing. I'll show you all the contents of the packaging in these, but this is Sleep and uh, Red Angel. So both of these came to me from Arrow Video. So these are all the Arrow Video January releases. So I'm really excited to uh, get into these and talk about them with you guys. Before I do that, I have to ask, if you're not yet a subscriber of the Middle of a Media channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. I do tons of content, Blu-ray, 4K content. I do reviews like this, physical media reports, Blu-ray out and about videos, collection updates, just tons of stuff. If you like this kind of stuff, you like boutique Blu-rays, I cover a lot of those like Arrow Video, Criterion, Screen Factory, Kino Lorber, all that good stuff if you like that kind of stuff definitely consider hitting that subscribe button also be sure to like this video guys and comment down below what are your thoughts on shock is this one of your favorite baba films have you seen this have you even seen an italian horror film before like dario argento suspiria any of that stuff are you brand new to this and you're looking to me to sell you um on this on this genre let me know in that comment section below so Let's get into talking about this, guys. I'm excited to talk about this because I really, I really enjoyed this film quite a bit. I think I gave it a four out of a five um, on Letterboxd, so I enjoy this film. I had never seen a Mario Bava film, so his last film, which this is the last film that he directed, was my first film that I ever seen from this director. And he co-directed this film as well with his son, uh, Lamberto Bava, which is interesting. His last film was kind of like a passing of the torch. This was his last film before his untimely death in 1980. He died at 65, so still pretty young. And he's really credited as being the creator of the giallo, which I would describe as a type of Italian horror that kind of mixes the detective genre and the slasher genre and just kind of combines those two together. There's, ma there's many different interpretations of what a giallo is, but it's kind of, to me at this point, you know it when you see it. And I've seen a lot of Argento films. I think I've seen 10 of his at this point. Uh, but I am looking to dive into some of the other famous Giallo directors like Mario Bava, like Lucio Fulci. But all of these directors really, to me, had sort of the same style, at least from this one I could tell, uh, was very similar in style and nature as some of the other Dario Argento films that I've seen, the Lucio Fulci films. I'm sure when you can really just start to dive into this genre and start picking apart the differences, I'm sure I'll be able to notice more. But but as of right now, it feels the same stylistically as a giallo. Even though I would not call this film a giallo, this is more or less a haunted house ghost story, kind of a psychological thriller. So it's not a giallo, but it definitely has some of those elements in there, especially in like the final 20 minutes, you start to see uh, more of that like slasher based horror. And Mario Bava as well is just, like I said, one of the more influential Italian filmmakers. It even says it on the back right here. He inspired filmmakers like Dario Argento, which I was reading the um, the little booklet in here and they were talking about how Dario was really kind of up and coming as uh, Mario Bava was, you know, kind of winding down. So he was in his 60s, Dario was in his 30s uh, when they were both coming up together. And Shock actually came out in the same year that Suspiria came out, which is arguably Dario Argento's most popular film that he's done. It's also saying that he inspired filmmakers like Martin Scorsese, like Tim Burton with some of his more gothic films like Black Sabbath. So he's really all over the map from what I can tell what I was reading. Reading. He created the Giallo, did those type of movies, but he also did other types of films as well. So I'm really interested um, in checking out more of his stuff. I know he did Bay of Blood and I had that Kino Logo release and that's credited as being like the first slasher. So it sounds like a guy uh, that really was responsible for creating a lot of the different sub-genres uh, of the horror genre. So definitely looking to check out more of his film. But getting into this actual film, Getting into the synopsis, just what it's about. So it's basically a couple. You have the woman that's husband died. Um, I'm not exactly sure the timeline, but I'm assuming it was some, a few years before uh, her husband had died. She's remarried to this pilot uh, guy. They've got a son, so it's kind of like his adopted son. So they're together. They got a son. They move back into the house 
that her husband died in, uh, which is kind of weird in and of itself. And then creepy things start to happen. Her son kind of acts as a conduit for what you think is her ex-husband uh, that passed away. So it's kind of like a vengeful ghost spirit that's kind of inhabiting her son, or at least that's what you're led to believe throughout the film. And that's one of the things I really like about this movie. It is, is kind of like a supernatural haunted house movie, but it also is kind of like a psychological thriller. Like there's part, they kind of leave it ambiguous as to is this all of this going on in Dora's mind, which is who Dario Nicolodi is playing in this film, who is another big time Italian actress, was in tons of Argento films like Deep Red, Tenebrae. I believe they were married at some point, but she's a huge Italian actress and I'm definitely really enjoying her work. But yeah, Dora, it's it's kind of implied that she could be on the verge of a mental break, like all this stuff could be happening in her head. So you never really know. The film kind of plays both ends, like it could be supernatural in nature, it could not be, it could be in her head. You don't really know, and when you get to the end, it's kind of left ambiguous. So Daria Nicolodi, I think she's fantastic in this film. Like the more I'm seeing of this actress, the more I'm really loving. Um, she has just such an elegance about her and her performance, and then she just really can sell that terror and that fear in her performance. Like, I just buy every ounce of it. John Steiner plays her uh, new husband of Bruno in this movie. He's really good in this film, kind of playing the straight-laced uh, character. You know, her husband It's kind of coming in, trying to help her through her issues and her problems. And you got David Collin Jr. as Marco. This kid, to be honest... I don't know, between this and the kid from uh, House by the Cemetery, which is another Lucio Fulci film. I can't remember. I think the kid's name was Bob in there, which Marco's a weird name for a kid anyway. Uh, but the kid's fine. It's a good child performance. You know, it's the creepy kid performance. And he, I don't know, it's okay, but he can be a little bit annoying as a character at times too. And there's some weird stuff going on between him and his mom throughout the film. Um, that I'll just say is weird. You know, there's some really great style to this movie. Like I said, you have those classic giallo hallmarks, just the camera movements and stuff like that. It's all, it's shot beautifully well. It's all pretty much in one location. It's all taking place in that house. You have some sequences just showing Bruno getting on the plane because he's the pilot, but those are really like few and far between. It's mostly taking place in this one location. Some really good effects work's done here. There's, there's a sequence with a box cutter like flying towards uh, uh, Dario Nicolodi as she's like standing over in the corner of the bedroom that I thought was actually pretty well done. There's also some really good like makeup effects. Like there's a monster hand that, it, that, it, that comes up more than once in here that I thought was pretty creepy and pretty effective. Um, and then at one point you see like the full blown like uh, makeup effects of her ex-husband. Like he's like deteriorating. So really good makeup effects in this. There's some fun sequences in this movie, some really memorable sequences in this film. The last 10 minutes of this movie is like pure set piece. Like there's all the, it's where stuff really breaks down. It really goes for it. And I really appreciated that because you could say this movie's a little bit of a slow burn throughout. There are things happening throughout the film. Uh, but they're all like little things that are happening throughout the movie. And it really just goes for it in those last 10 minutes. It's bat crap uh, crazy in those last 10 minutes. That sequence uh, where the kid's running at her down the hallway. First off, like it's an incredibly well edited sequence. But when the kid's running down at her from the hallway and he jumps and it turns into her ex-husband um, and her ex-husband jumps into her arms for like for one that's an incredibly creepy sequence because a kid turning into a doll like that and jumping into her arms like the face on him was like that of a kid that's excited and jumping into his mother's arms so that was creepy in and of itself and it was just a very well edited scene libra uh, did the score to this. I love that it. it's 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 phenomenal. It is that classic like Giallo score. It's like you know it when you hear it. You hear the loud drum beats and stuff like that. You know a Giallo score when you hear it. I've watched enough to know. But it also has those like haunted house like vibes in there as well. Like the kind of undertones under the score that kind of bring in the supernatural a little bit into it and give you those feels as well. So I appreciated the score. I really enjoyed it. I really love like most every Giallo score I've ever heard. I love uh, Goblin has some phenomenal ones. This is a really good movie. I, I give it a four out of a five. I really enjoyed this quite a bit. Definitely makes me want to check out more of uh, Mario Bava's work for sure. So let's get into uh, the contents of this release, the transfer, all of that good stuff. So with this one, guys, you are looking at a 2K restoration from the original 35 millimeter. It is an aspect ratio 185.1. And I thought that Arrow Video did a fantastic job on this release. And this is the first time that this 
this movie has been on Blu-ray, at least as far as I could tell. And yeah, I thought Arrow Video did a fantastic job cleaning up this movie and it just looks super crisp and clear, but also has a good amount of grain in there as well to maintain that classic uh, film feel. You know, the colors in this movie look really good. Like it just, it just looks really clean and crisp and clear. The facial detail is really awesome, but I couldn't help get the feeling while watching it just how much better it would look in 4K because seeing some of those Dario Argento 4Ks last year, like Deep Red, like Cat on Nine Tails, and just knowing what they can pull off with this type of movie in the 4K format, I don't know. I think it would look phenomenal in 4K. So I hope at some point Aero Video does upgrade this to 4K because I think it would look fantastic, even better in 4K. But as a Blu-ray, it looks good and it's definitely the best that this movie has ever looked. So Aero Video did a fantastic uh, job on this release. Now, as far as the audio, both the Italian and the English dubbed versions of this were restored in DTS HD master audio. So I had no issues with the audio. Like I said, I'm just operating on a basic setup with the soundbar, but I thought it sounded excellent. Like the score sounds fantastic. It's all utilized very well together with the score and the dialogue, like everything uh, just sounded fantastic with this release. So I thought that they did a hell of a job uh, just cleaning up the sound as well. And let's get into these special features, guys, because Arrow video killed it with special features in this release and these are all first time special features like i said this doesn't have a previous release these are all brand new special features that arrow video just did for this particular release and i would say it's upwards about two and a half to three hours of additional interviews um and and essays video essays just all kinds of great special features but let's get into it guys they got a new audio commentary by tim lucas author of Mario Bava, All the Colors of the Dark. So you have somebody that wrote about Mario Bava doing the audio commentary. I didn't listen to the audio commentary, but I would definitely want to go back and listen to it at some point. So you got that. Um, and that's not even counting the 2.53 hours of special features that I'm talking about. But you get a ghost in the house, a new video interview with co-director and co-writer Lamberto Bava. So you get an interview with his son talking about making this movie with his dad. You get Via Del Orgolo 33, a new video interview with co-writer Dardano Sacchetti. I'm going to butcher all of these names, I know. Uh, you got The Devil Pulls the Strings, a new video essay by author and critic Alexandra Heller Nicholas. Uh, I thought this was a fantastic video essay and really taught me a lot about the making of this movie and just the time period and just Mario Bava's career in general. A lot of these are really just, it, this almost felt like they talked about shock, they talked about the movie, but it also felt like just a retrospective as a whole on the career of Mario Bava. So I definitely appreciated that. Shock horror, the stylistic diversity of Mario Bava, a new video appreciated by author and critic Stephen Thrower, the most atrocious torture, a new interview with critic Alberto Ferrini, and Italian theatrical trailer for US Beyond the Door TV spots. I think this movie was called Beyond the Door 2 in America. Maybe, maybe that was the title in America. Uh, but you get those TV spots, image gallery, reversible sleeves. So yeah, let's show off the packaging real quick. But special features, God, they killed it with special features in a release, definitely giving you your money worth. So you got shock right here. This is awesome artwork. I love the artwork. This may be some of my favorite aura. Uh, Arrow video artwork. You get this disc right here, and I haven't noticed that them doing this on every Arrow video release, but I did think it was cool how you put the disc up there and it goes with the actual case itself. And somebody let me know, I don't feel like they do this all the time with the releases, but you get this booklet inside, which I actually read this. I read most of it. I don't always read the booklets, but I was just so interested in Mario Baba's career that um, I actually read most of this booklet. So this is a nice booklet, just kind of, again, telling you about Mario Bava's career, how he got into uh, making films, how he how his career led up to making this one, his final film. So very interesting, um, very interesting read right there. And then you reverse it, and you get this classic poster of the film as well. So uh, yeah, really good packaging on this one. Guys, I think Arrow Video absolutely killed it with this release. I would recommend it. The movie's great. The special features are awesome, tons of them. The transfer is really solid for a Blu-ray release. And yeah, I just think it's a fantastic release. So I will be leaving the link for purchase down below. It is $27.99. So I know a little steep for a newer release, but this is a boutique Blu-ray. And if you're a fan of Mario Bava, if you're a fan of this film, I think that this is the definitive way uh, to own it. So definitely recommend picking this up. So let's go to the table, guys, and we will unbox these other two Arrow video release, and then we'll close out the video. Guys, so I already removed the plastic so I get through this quicker, but this is Sleep. Like I said, this is a newer film. I think this came out in 2021. Um, it's a German film. So yeah, I don't really know too much about it, but definitely looks like a cool title, cool slipcover right here. 
directed by Mikel Venus, who protects you when you dream. So something to do with dreams. I don't know, maybe like a Nightmare on Elm Street type film, possibly. Uh, but the spine is awesome right here. This is a really great slipcover. I'm going to show you the back. We're going to show you the synopsis of the film right there. And then I'll kind of go up and show you all the special features, tons of special features. Like I said, Aero Video just always does such an incredible job with their special features. And we'll look at the specs down here as well. And I'll try to zoom. I'm trying to zoom in on the casting. But let's go ahead and take it out of the slipcover. So, oh, you got a different image. That's actually pretty cool. So when you remove the slipcover, uh, you got a different image. So the uh, cover on the Arrow uh, version, uh, which I don't know if it has reversible cover art yet, but is different. So you don't really see that too often. So zoom in right there. Definitely a creepy image right there. I'm gonna, I might have to give this movie a watch sooner rather than later. Looks pretty interesting. So zoom in on the cast and we get a better look at it right there. So let's open this up. Cool disc art for sure. Love that disc art. And we'll look inside here. I think this is a this is a poster. So cool. Arrow Video sometimes will put posters. I wish Shock had a poster in it because that um, that release looks awesome. That that artwork on it looks awesome. So and yeah. So you just get the two different sides, the slipcover version and then the cover. So and then you also get this booklet. Arrow just always does a great job with all of their releases. Just the full treatment, so. And I believe this one's available for $27.99. Will be available on January the 25th, so this is still a week out from release. Uh, so yeah, definitely really cool stuff right here, guys. Let's do the reversible cover arts real quick. I do like this reversible cover art. I like the artwork on the other ones. Um, this is just very standard from the actual movie. I don't know, this looks like a really interesting film. Like I said, I don't know too much about it, but it definitely looks really cool. Cool packaging, so yeah, I'll dig into this one and I'll give my thoughts when I do watch it for sure. But yeah, sleep right here, guys. I forgot to put the poster back in. Don't want to forget about that. So definitely a really cool title from Arrow Video. Like I said, due out on January the 25th, so that'll be uh, next Tuesday. So let's get into Red Angel. This one is already out. It's available now as of January the 18th, along with Shock, which we just talked about and reviewed. So both of those are available now. But this is a Japanese uh, war horror film, I think is, is what I was reading about it, uh, from 1966. So definitely a cool title from Arrow Video. I wish this one had the slipcover, but you know, Arrow doesn't always do slipcovers with their releases. Uh, so yeah, this is just like a regular Blu-ray, like a Criterion title. Zoom in on the special features. Not as much special features as some of the other titles, but show you the specs down here and then we'll i don't think i zoomed in on the uh, synopsis so yeah i'll show you that off as well definitely a cool cover but you know not too much going on you got that skull in the background which i like so we'll go ahead and take this out awesome uh disc art for sure it has like, like medical um like the military medical symbol on it it just kind of looks very like 40s world war ii which i think this movie is set uh during world war ii so that would Definitely explain that. And uh, yeah, you get this booklet in here. Again, awesome booklet by Arrow Video. Just giving you all the, a lot of insight on these films and the creative process. So yeah, they always do great work with that. And then you get a card, Arrow Video card. Uh, but I really like that artwork. That's some great artwork. And you do have reversible cover art on this one. Go ahead and turn it. And you have that original poster from the film. I definitely like... Um, I definitely like this cover a little bit better. It's definitely got more going on. But again, I can't read the title of the film when you have that. But uh, I do like this cover art better than, than what they chose to do with the Arrow artwork. So there you have it, guys. That is the Arrow video. I'll try to reverse this cover art real quick. Uh, that is the Arrow video January releases. And yeah, just some really good stuff this month. Like I said, Shock is one that you should absolutely purchase. I, th I thought this was an incredible release uh, by Arrow Video, so definitely check that one out. But appreciate you guys watching. Like, comment down below if you're going to pick any of these up. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell notifications, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys later.